Your next assignment will have you using tables to create a game. This game is, is one that I call the gnome game or the garden game. Here's an example of the run. Here's an introduction. Welcome to the gnome garden. You stumbled into a magical garden. Before you are hiding places that contain either garden gnomes or trolls. The garden gnomes will help you with your work, but the trolls will take away the gnomes. Your goal is to collect at least 10 garden gnomes to win, and you're going to be given three tries. So I've laid out in a grid pattern, so this is my table, a bunch of asterisks, and this is just representing where the hiding places are because the table actually contains a random number for how many garden gnomes are in that hiding place. And I randomly selected three of them to be trolls, so they have negative numbers. So this is the, the beginning of the game, and then it's going to ask you which row and which column. Now, I didn't make any adjustments. So you know in Python, the first row and the first column is 0. So this is going to be 0 through 4 and 0 through 4. <clears throat> you can actually take the time to label them if you want to, but we're just going to go on the assumption that, that the first row and the first column are actually 0. So let's try the first row and first column. I'm going to put in a 0 and a 0. And you can see that, first of all, it tells me that I found four garden gnomes. So I have a total of four, and then it replaced the asterisk with the zero. So I know that I already selected this, gar this hiding place. Now it's going to ask me for another one. So let's try um, row two and column one. That tells me that I, once again, found four garden gnomes. So I have a total of eight, and I replaced the asterisk with a zero. Now I have my third try. And I'm going to try uh, row 3 and column 1. I found four more garden gnomes. So I ended up with 12 and I win. I'm going to play this again and I might come across a troll. So I've got once again the introduction and I've got my grid of hiding places. Let's start with uh, column 4, I mean row 4 and column 3. One garden gnome, that's not going to get me very far, but you can see where the zero is. Let's try two and two. And now I found five. And for my random numbers, five was the highest, so that's the most I can find. I'm going to have a hard time winning, but let's try um, zero and three. I won again. I haven't found any trolls yet, but trust me, they are there. Now my last run, you can see the first time I picked, uh, I got one garden gnome and, and it was right here. Then this time I found a troll and he took five garden gnomes. So I actually have a minus garden gnomes. Then I found another troll, so I ended up quite in the hole and I lost. When you start this program, I want you to start off really basic with just making sure that you get a grid. So here's one doesn't even actually play the game yet, but it just puts a grid there, and behind the grid there are actually the numbers. So I could change this. I did two print tables. So you can see that I've got the grid filled with random numbers, and I've got three trolls there. <clears throat> so I'm, when I do incremental development, I want to first just make sure that I fill my grid with random numbers, and then I can print it. And then I modified the print so that it would print an asterisk if there was an, a number there and it would print a zero and once I selected this location then I, I would get the value and I would change the number held in this location to zero so when I'm printing the table if the value is zero I print zero and otherwise I print an asterisk so changing the print table was pretty simple and I also put in my tabs. So you want to get this far first, and then you're going to add in the play game where you're making your choices. And then you can go even further and put in some loops and other modifications that you might want to do as time permits. So my final game, and I could still work on it some more, but I put in some more randomness. Instead of always three tries and ten gnomes, I've got a random number of tries and a random number of garden gnomes within a range. So this time it's 3 and 11. I had random tries from 3 to 5, and I think I had garden gnomes from 8 to 15. So every time I play the game, it's a little bit different. So I'm going to put in a row and column. I'm going to put in a row and column. 
I'm going to put in a row of my columns. And I ended up losing. I only got nine. And one thing I did not do is error checking. So it does let you pick the same hiding place again. Of course, nothing will happen because there's a zero in it. And also, I didn't check for out of range. So if somebody put in a five or six, I would it would just um, have a runtime error and stop my program. So you can, if you have time permitting, you can do even more. But I do have a play again, something pretty.